Finance Committee. Uh, it looks like all members are present, so we'll note that. Um, so, <coughs> the first item is the approval of the minutes of October 25th, 2011. Motion approved. Second. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed? So it's unanimous. The second item is an update to the city's vehicle purchasing policy. Uh, we have Chris Mason, who's here. Um, um, he's the city's energy and sustainability officer to give us uh, some info on that. Chris? No. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, as you know, the, uh, the city has adopted a green vehicle uh, purchasing policy. As part of becoming a green community, uh, the Department of Energy Resources has updated their criteria for that vehicle purchasing policy. And, and uh, so uh, the Energy Commission is going to have to, is going to be bringing a, a, a recommended updated policy to the City Council in the meetings in December. I'm giving you a heads up on it because it'll be a fairly quick turnaround. Um, in order, we, we, need to up, we need to adopt this new policy in order to remain eligible to apply for green community grants. And we anticipate a grant <coughs> application to come out at any time. And then there will be a certain number of, you know, maybe two months before we have to turn the application in. So it leaves us, uh, it's just a heads up because we uh, know that the city council is turning over its new members in January. And so we were hoping to have this taken care of with the council as it sits right now instead of having to go through that transition period you know, which may delay us uh, beyond the ability to apply for a green community grant. Really quickly, two things that they've updated. They've updated the number of miles per gallon required, um, just a very one mile per gallon more, and that we're probably going to ask the, commission, uh, the City Council to adopt a policy that just follows the DOE guidelines. Um, we can always back out of it if they change their guidelines, but we really don't like it. So you know, adopt a policy to, to follow the guidelines. And the second one is um, they have become crystal <coughs> clear that transferring um, vehicles such as Crown Victoria's from the police department to other departments is not an acceptable policy. And so we are looking at, um, you know, we, Energy Commission looked at it and said, well, it's been assumed policy for many years, but no one's ever actually evaluated to see whether it's actually a cost-effective policy. Uh, so we're looking at that right now, and we'll be coming in with recommendations on um, how to uh, update that to be able to meet the green communities and, and not cost the city more money. So that's what the Energy Commission is working on right now. They meet next on December 8th, so we probably won't be able to bring anything to you on December 1st. Um, uh, I might be able to stop in and give you a more of a heads up on December 1st where things are going, but a, a formal recommendation won't happen until December 8th. Uh, when they next meet, and which means we may need two readings on the second meeting uh, if, uh, of the City Council in December, in one night. What's the committee that's meeting? Uh, the Energy Commission. The Energy Commission mm -hmm. meet on the 8th. Mm -hmm. And we'd be fine with doing two readings, except that the second reading would then be in January, which would be a new City Council, and we'd have to start the whole process over again. Um, okay, is, is the clock ticking? Well, it, it, it might be. We've been told that a new RFP is going to be coming out for a Green Communities Grant, uh, and um, it hasn't come out yet. Uh, as soon as it does, then the clock will be ticking, yes, that we need to adopt this. So, so for two readings, you're not looking to purchase anything at this point? Oh, no, no, no. This would just be a change of policy. Change, just a policy change. change. Of policy, right. And right. So, we can't apply for any green communities grants unless this is in place. Yes, unless it's, up, unless it's updated, yes. We adopted it earlier this year, right. or in February of 2001. Yeah. 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 Okay. So basically all I'm here for is to give you a heads up that it's coming down the road. So as we start passing you information, you're ready to look at it, and hopefully we can expedite it. So the big V8 police cruisers are not acceptable anymore? Not to be transferred to a different department, right? It's the, instead of uh, purchasing a new vehicle, it's acquiring a new vehicle is the way they, they picture it. So if you, you acquire a V8 that's got a low gas mileage, that doesn't fit under their criteria. So we're looking to see, and it actually may not make sense. It, my preliminary looks 
you know, looking at it preliminarily, it looks like we could just buy other used vehicles and it would be about the same cost to the city uh, because of the, the savings we would have in miles in the gas and the ability to sell the Crown Vicks to get some, some kind of an in, uh, income from that. So we're looking at that, making sure that this policy works, but we'll be bringing a recommendation forward uh, as we finalize it. I'm actually threatening to buy another, but to buy it to get rid of my big pickup. I want to buy a small car. I've got two pickups. One gets about eight miles to the gallon around town. So it probably might make, might make some sense. Right, we, we, you know, it's always been an assumed policy. And we said, well, no one's ever looked at it, so why don't we take a look, see if it makes any sense. Chris, what time is that meeting on the 8th? December 8th, we always meet from uh, 4, 4 to 5.30. In the hearing room? No, we, we hold them in the Media Education Foundation room. The conference room. The conference room over the Media Education Foundation. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make Crown Vicks anymore, so that's a fact. That's yeah. true. They're great. But I don't think the Ford Tauruses would take the place either. Sell them on the NC market. The, um, I, I do have a question, though. Um, how do they determine what's a standard pickup truck and what's a heavy duty truck? Because we've been, DPW's been buying the 550s now, and there's no way that's, that's going to, you know, even a 350, it's hard to get over 10 miles a gallon. Uh, it, where do they. 500s. Heavy duty is printed right on the bumper. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, it's no, it's actually vehicle. It's uh, gross vehicle weight. It is, yeah. It's gross not. vehicle weight. Okay, I wonder how they called it. Right. And, and I don't believe that. I believe the 350 is, is, is an exempt vehicle. 350, 550 is definitely an exempt vehicle. 350, I'm pretty sure, is an exempt vehicle. Well, must be a 250 for those kind of miles because if you don't put any weight in it, you're, you know, it can't always go just downhill. Exactly. Right. Right. No, these are they're basically the policy is basically covering the passenger vehicles that were used to drive around people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks Any other for questions? Okay. okay. Keep Thank you. Thanks, okay. Uh, the next item. Um, these are have some orders for CPA uh, borrowings uh, that were approved by the CPA by the CPC. And before they actually came to City Council, I thought it would be good to have them come to finance and just give us a preview of them. And then the plan would be to put them on the agenda for our next meeting, um, December 1st. Yeah, which will be publishing tomorrow. So Sarah Favalli is here, um, as well as Amory Moggio and Wayne Fiden, um, to give us uh, sort of an overview of that project. All right, so um, the Community Preservation Committee just completed a funding round um, for this for uh, round two, 2011, and three recommendations are coming out of this. We had a lot of good project applications, but money was tight, so these are the three coming forward. There's $302,000 for the Mineral Hills Bookends Land Acquisition, $275,000 uh, for the Academy of Music Historic Restoration, and then... Um, in a, an order that's a little bit more confusing than these other two, um, $1,957,000 for the Recreation Commission's creation of Florence Fields. And the reason this is a little bit confusing is because we were hoping to hear about um, a park grant for $757,000, but we haven't yet heard about that, so the committee just decided to go ahead and fund it either way. Um, so if that grant is received, then that request will go down to $1.2 million. This is a total ticket was 1.9 million. Yes. And so we haven't, we don't know about the 700,000 yet, but it could come. Yes. And that would offset this 1.9. Yeah, and if it does, then then the uh, resolution is written so that the the bonding request will go down to 1.2 million. Okay. And also, if the if the grant does not come through and the the full request of one one million nine hundred fifty-seven thousand is needed. 
257,576 will also be returned to the city's CPA accounts because that was previously awarded as a match for the park grant and that won't be needed okay. if the grant doesn't come through. Yes, on the Academy of Music at 275,000, that's going to be for the interior and exterior. What are they going to be doing with that? Uh, they badly need a new roof above the stage from the application. We understood that that's leaking pretty heavily. Um, it will also fund a lot of interior plaster work and replacement of the seats, which I think have been there for about 70 years. There's also a huge painting issue in there, too. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, the plaster work will also incorporate some new painting. Okay. And the roof, now the other roof, we're talking about the high roof. Yes. Because the other roof has already been done, is that correct? The lower roof, okay. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Um, yeah. We're not, again, we're not voting on this. It was just no. to bring it forward as a preview before we go to the, uh, the um, How much of Florence Fields does this cover? Yeah, that might be I'll different. defer to Andrew even <coughs> So the entire project budget um, is about $2.3 million. Um, that includes, I'm not sure if you had a picture sent to the around or includes um, five playing fields and two baseball fields, a restroom concession building, pavilion, and playground, as well as a multi-purpose um, walkway that's going along um, a trail along Meadow Street. Um, so the CPC has funded um, what, what they voted on was one point, about 1.9 million or 1.2, um, which will include everything but the playground and pavilion. Um, so the playground and pavilion got taken out of that um, part of the budget and the plans are to, we, there's a fundraising committee that started a few months ago. The plans are to start hopefully fundraising for that portion of it. So it's pretty much almost the entire project. Except the playground and, pavilion. and the pavilion. Yes. Okay, so everything with that. Yes. And then uh, kind of probably a wing question. Can you describe the, the bookends? You know, yeah, which, which pieces two, of the two parcels of land. One is a Saracen parcel that's on Chesterfield Road, and one is gendered real estate property that's on the end of Chesterfield Road. So it's we own most of that all the property in between and this would be sort of expanding the area to logical endings. Now, the one on the Turkey Hill side, is that that one other lot that was cut out up on, on the top? Which he owns two other lots. There's one at the top that's been active views. We're not trying to get that because that's sort of an expansion. There's one that's really surrounded by conservation land on two and a half sides. And that and that's the one we're trying to get. That's, well, that's important both with the sticks into the conservation area. And also, if you remember last year when we purchased Disky property, yeah. we said one of the benefits we could discontinue a lot of turkey around. This is the other one on that stretch. Right. Okay, so it's before you get the Johns. But and the and the, the but the one that would remain is the one that's sort of up behind the condos at the work okay services. Alright. And that's the higher value. I mean that is a huge driver, it's the higher value we're not going after that. Okay. Good. Uh, one more question on the on the Field. That's projected out for how many years? This uh, this will be a 15 year. 15 year. 15 year bond. They don't have a interest rate or anything on that yet. We nothing. No. And when we did our calculations, we projected four percent, but we don't know what the okay. exact numbers are going to be yet. Council. Um, Turkey Hill Road. When, where does Joan Serafin's property connect with this? She's not, that's what we call the bookends. This is two different ends of the mineral hills. Okay, when you come up to the quarry. So, so that's where the gendered real estate property is. That's okay. the one we buy in there. If you drive around all the way up to Chesterfield Road, that's where the Serafin property is. Yes. Um, so what are we doing? So what we do purchasing on Turkey Hill Road is if you drive up to basically where the road ends, I know where it is. That's where the property boundary is. This property begins. So this property has about 50 feet of frontage on the road, and then continues along the road in a portion that's not maintained by the city. Because to the left is the condominiums. Then we have 
the lot that's way up on the hill, correct? Yep. Yeah. We own that? If, no, we're not that one now. That's a privately if, if owned lot. If you start the driveway towards the one way up on the hill, yep. you leave Turkey and Road about 100 feet if you leave Turkey and Road, the roads, the driveway splits. Gotcha. The okay. one the straight goes up the hill, okay. and the one that we be dealing with is the one that goes to the right. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, so then. Oh, we don't know. We don't have when they're supposed to get back to us or anything on that grant, that $750,000. We have no idea. Today. We always have to we, we, we thought they would have already. Any day now. Literally, I mean, I, I'm not joking. I've been doing this 20 years. It's the first time they've ever gone beyond the election day. So any day now, but we just don't know. We, as far as we know, it's in the governor's office, and they're waiting. We've been signing a lot of stuff lately. Oh, so yeah. This may not have been a, as high a priority as casino gambling. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we anticipate it. Is that correct? We Cautiously just, optimistic? Yeah, cautious optimistic. You know, unfortunately, the state has called Commonwealth Capital for six years. Yep. That the grants, sixty percent of this, of this scoring is based in Commonwealth Capital, and we are the top ranked community. So for six years, we are almost guaranteed it. That program has ended, unfortunately. We still think it's a great project; it should score well. But the guarantees we would have given you a year ago yeah. are gone. You know, it's just it, it, it's going to depend who the competition is. The other thing is, when they announce these programs, they don't say how much money is available. So if the governor funds eight million dollars, we're probably going to get funded. The governor funds two million dollars. We may not get funded. We just don't know the answer to that. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on December first. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next item is uh, from uh, the health director Ben Wood, um, who's here, and it's a uh, proposal for a new revolving fund for the board of health. So, I'll turn the floor over to you. Okay. Hello, everybody. I have a couple of handouts here. If I made enough copies. Double sent. All right, so I'm, I'm here to talk about the potential establishment of a uh, revolving fund called the Public Health Nurse Revolving Fund, and uh, as, the, as the name implies, this is about developing a, a pool of money to support uh, public health nursing programs in the city. Just a little bit of background for, in, in terms of the health department as a whole, it, it should be it should be uh, it should be known that our entire operating budget, operating maintenance budget, is only ninety four hundred dollars. So it leaves us very little wiggle room for any discretionary um, funding of initiatives um, that go beyond uh, the basic maintenance of, of what it is that we need to do. Um, so, you know, I, since I've since I've been here two years, this has been a, a topic that. Um, I've, I've hoped to uh, bring forward to the council, and um, with the uh, with the previous mayor's um, blessing, we move forward with it. <laughs> at least talking about it in initial stages, and then with the current acting mayor and the finance director, um, I was sort of put some uh, more details to the proposal. So the the basic idea is that uh, uh, through a new revenue source, uh, which is through uh, collecting fees from the administration of vaccine and the cost of vaccine that we purchase, uh, we could have a, a small fund to support um, purchasing additional vaccines, uh, uh, support uh, more professional development for the public health nurse, uh, and support uh, additional um, uh, health education and um, programs and services that the public health nursing program would, uh, would provide. Uh, so uh, the, the, the finances behind it are you know, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit unclear because this is a new revenue source, and we haven't gone through the process yet of uh, doing reimbursement for um, uh, re uh, administration of vaccines. So, not exactly sure how much uh, money we're going to be able to get um, from that source on a yearly basis. But I did a little bit of number crunch this morning, and the public health nurse uh, uh, provided over 600 valid, um, doses of flu vaccine this fall, which was a really good year 
in a down year of actual interest in, uh, in the flu vaccine. So it was a, it was a really good um, uh, demonstration of, of her ability to do outreach uh, and get, get, uh, get our vaccine out there. And uh, just looking at Medicare reimbursement and looking at reimbursement from, um, uh, from doing employees and uh, city employees and school employees, we're looking at probably between $5,000 and $8,000 of, of reimbursement. Uh, and there might be more out there that, uh, that, we, that we'll be eligible to get, but we really don't know until we start going through the process of, of doing the billing. Um, so uh, that would be um, a good estimate maybe of a, of a typical year of, of reimbursement for just flu. Uh, but again, the idea is that uh, we would have this fund to purchase additional vaccine, which would then perpetuate the, perpetuate the fund and um, uh, uh, make us eligible for a more administration um, re reimbursement fees. Uh, so that's the sort of basic lay of the land. I don't know how much more detail you want me to uh, provide in terms of overview. I just, just by way of information, so that I know this year um, for city employees, you did you offered flu shots. Yep. So people that were on the city's health plan or not on the city's health plan would so fill out a form, and get the shot, and then you'd submit that to their insurance company to get reimbursed. Right. And I know there was a similar program in the schools for kids. Yep. Uh, and that was that also done by your office? Yeah, in, in collaboration with the schools. Exactly. Yep. So. Like I did my kids, we signed them up to get flu shots at school and fill out a form, and, right. and that's how they did it. And I got my flu shot through the city. So right. that's the money that you're going to get reimbursed for and use that to buy new shots. Basically. How do we get the first batch of shots again? Uh, well, we have, we have two, we have two uh, um, uh, pools of, of uh, vaccine. One is state-supplied free vaccine, and the other is vaccine that we purchase. So every year we do purchase a small amount of vaccine. Uh, and this year, we purchased additional vaccine um, that was not planned for through the um, city's insurance trust, and the schools purchased additional vaccine that they hadn't in years past, all with the idea that um, hopefully we would be um, um, collecting the reimbursement for the administration and we could perpetuate it again next year. And who's going to be taking care of, like, all the records and so forth and the insurance part of it? Will you be doing that? or? I will be a collaborative effort between myself, the public health nurse, and the board of health clerk. My, my, actually, my, my, my involvement will probably be more minimal than the than the nurse and the clerks. But and we talked about this last um, last night. Is it? But it's private insurance, and it's also Medicare. Yes. Medicaid. Yeah, Medi Medicare is the is the is the big one in terms of reimbursement. I'm not, they, they don't know, quote me on this number, but I think it's approximately $22 um, uh, per, um, per shot for, our, for a reimbursement for Medicare. So it's pretty good. Um, the, 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 the private insurers are less than that, but still it's, it's, it's decent reimbursement. Why is there such a big jump on Medicare versus private insurance? I don't, I don't know really the answer to that. No. So, and is there just the rationale for creating a, a revolving fund as opposed to just managing this separately within a budget? Or I'm just curious about that part. Well, uh, I, I think that uh, his, historically it's, it's been the case that uh, funds that go into the general, general fund are not easily accessible, and, and, you know, uh, to turn around and, and, and put them into programming. So this would, be a, this would be a way to take a very underfunded program in the city, which is the public health nursing program, and give it a little bit of money to do some more discretionary programming and be more proactive in terms of our ability to identify community health needs and respond to them. Okay. And from, I just going to ask the finance director and maybe the treasurer, from your perspective, is this, is this fun, creating a small fund like this, is this, uh, is this okay? No, this is, this is fine. This, this fits into the criteria for a 53B and a half. And you can never expend from that type of revolving fund with that. You can't, like a grant, you can get a grant, spend money, and then get reimbursed. You have, with a revolving fund, you have to have the money in the bank as you spend it. So you can never expend from it unless there's a balance to cover it. So it will take probably a year for Ben to really work up some balance that he'll then be able to spend. So this could all also be a receipts reserved. Is that right or not? You know, I would have to research what the actual difference is. I know that they have different criteria, but 
there is receipts reserved for appropriation. Yeah. But that requires a vote to <coughs> actually appropriate it. Those are the votes you actually move it. Right. A revolving fund can be spent without additional votes. Okay. So the revolving fund will have the authority to Ben will have the authority, he won't have to come to anybody. If the fund has $2,000 in it and he wants to spend $2,000, he can just spend it. So it's it's a faster turnaround. And then every year when you vote the annual budget, you reauthorize all of these 53 and a half revolving funds. So that's kind of like your check and balance to say, is this something we still need to keep doing? So otherwise, if we do it as a receipt reserve, you'd have to, every time you wanted to spend money, we would have to do an order and move the money Okay, and there's not a huge amount of money. I, no. I wrote this up to limit to 2500 Okay. Um, and then if Ben finds out at the end of this year that we need to raise that, when you reauthorize it, that's when we look at the limits, and then we might say 5000 Okay. So. And the purposes for which it can be used are specified. Right. So it, it can only be used for the specific purposes. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going over receipts reserved in my head, too. I don't even think it's on the list. Right. Pretty specific on what you can. Okay. Right. This is just. This is going to operate like all our other revolving funds that we have. So. Like the rec department, which was just. Right. 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 And the auditor is the one who's going to scrutinize to make sure the expense matches what was voted in the revolving. Thank you. So, um, so I, I was unsure. This. Uh, this is. Folks are okay. What I would probably do is we put this on the agenda, on the finance committee agenda, for thir next Thursday, and we take it up in finance, and then send it to the full committee and, and move it forward. And then theoretically, we'd have it done by the end of the year, and mm -hmm. you could start the new year with the funding. Place. That's great. If uh, the rest of the council, if yeah. that's the will of the council. Okay, that would time, I think, well with actually starting to get some checks back from the insurers. Thanks for putting this together and okay. coming into it. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, the, um, the next item is a fiscal year 2012 update from Susan Wright. I really don't have a lot to tell you, just um, give you an update. I finished, uh, Joan and I finished a lot of the forms that are required to set the tax rate. Those are going down to the OR tomorrow, so hopefully by the next meeting. It's a little too early to do, give you the revenue and expenditure kind of quarterly report because it won't be till the end of December that we see the next quarter. So probably the first meeting in January, I'll give you another revenue report to tell you where we are as far as revenues. Um, and uh, we're, as far as expenditures, um, for the next meeting, I'll probably give you some update on where we are, just looking at departments and kind of extrapolating out their payroll, particularly in the overtime line items. I want to look at those to make sure that if we're not on track, what we can do to put ourselves back on track. So those are the kinds of things that I'm going to start looking for now that we're, you know, well into this fiscal year. Historically, is there any time after we uh, submit our tax rate that they certify free cash? Is that, is that all tied in at all together? If they sort of are, and they sort of aren't. Um, it's the outside, uh, yeah, the outside <laughs> auditor is the one who's actually doing the balance sheet that develops the free cash number. Yeah. Um, we do have a very preliminary free cash number. It looks like it'll be about 950. Um, might be as high as 975, maybe even a little bit higher, but it won't be over a million. Yeah. Um, so that's the number that I got from our auditor. Um, so, you know, it's not as good as last year. We were a little over a million last year. Um, and I do caution that most of that will probably get spoken for in uh, snow and ice, mm -hmm. veterans, legal, mm -hmm. and potentially some overtime accounts. So, um, you know, and you know, some will depend too if we get reimbursed from the hurricane in this fiscal year or we get reimbursed from the, um, the snow, of uh, the storm in October. You know, if those reimbursements come in, they can go right back into the accounts that funded. If, but if they come in after the fiscal year, then they go into free cash. So. Now, the storm that we just had in the cleanup, have we applied for a grant, FEMA, or anything? Uh, they, um, the folks from FEMA were just out here, I think, last week. 
and, uh, and Josh Shanley's still completing all the paperwork, but yeah, it's all, it's in process right now. I guess FEMA visited last week and toured with uh, Josh Shanley, uh, who's our emergency management director, so it's, it's in process. Uh, although, I think we're still, as I think you and I have talked about, we're, we, there still hasn't been the official federal whatever. Yeah. Uh, that has to all be approved still. Okay. Two years ago, they talked about uh, substantial, substantially more on the Medicare reimbursement out of Washington. Did that ever amount to anything? I'm not, sure. About, I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. We talked about a lot. We talked about a higher uh, reimbursement amount in Washington two years ago, and it was, I mean, it was everywhere. It was in all the newspapers. It was. Um, I'm just kind of wondering if it ever went. If it got any, picked up any steam or. Or did they just kind of throw that away along with the budget? The only piece that I can talk off the top of my head about is the Medicare that the schools bring in. And of course, that money goes into the general fund, but the schools file for the reimbursement. And they had given us extra Medicare, but it was, um, it was called ARRA Medicare. So that, yeah. it was part of the whole stimulus package. So we got additional Medicare based on the ARRA. And so those two years are over. Um, so Remember what that dollar amount was? Was it $200,000 in the two? It was two different ones. I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I just I, remember it. Mm. I know the schools bring in about 300000 in Medicare a year. That's typically okay. what it is. And it's gone up and down. Um, the firm that we use uh, on the school side, we use Lower Pioneer Valley Education Collaborative to do the billing for us. And they have the windows have closed. Like, you used to have a really long time to file your paperwork. Like, you could file it almost like 18 months after and you'd still get reimbursed. That window has been vastly shortened, so you have to get your stuff in a lot faster. Now, I'm not familiar with the Medicare billing that we do on the, on the uh, ambulance side. Okay. So, I can't speak to that today. Okay, thank you. So, I, just, I have just one new business item that I was going to ask about. When we did the, at the last city council meeting, we had the hearing on the single rate tax rate, uh, and then we took a first reading on the order, and there was a little bit of uncertainty as to whether we needed to do anything in finance or not do anything in finance. And I've looked back over time, and it's sort of mixed. We never voted on it in finance. We took a vote on it in finance. What we typically did, and, and it, it turned out I was helping clean up a yard on Saturday, which was two doors down from Chris Bean Skrupski, the former city clerk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so she watches the meeting still, so we talked about it a little bit. So probably what I was going to ask if we could do this, just to be safe, I don't think there's any big issue with it, what she recommended was taking a vote to just refer it to the full city council with no recommendation, which is essentially what we did. We took it up, we didn't, right. you know, the finance committee yep. didn't deal with it. So I guess I'm wondering, sort of just to go to cover ourselves just so there can be no issue procedurally, if today we could just, someone make a motion that we uh, refer that to the full city council with no recommendation. I make a motion that yeah. we refer it out to the full city council without a recommendation. I'll second that. Okay. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So then at least we just have it on record. I looked a couple of years back and we hadn't done anything like that, but because it's financial related, it should come through finance. but. Typically, the finance committee doesn't take a vote on it because we have to have a hearing before, you know, so just the way it was ordered was strange. So I'm not the only one that thought about that when we walked away from that meeting. I thought about it during yeah. the meeting at the same time, yep. and it was a little awkward to take it up before we'd actually had the hearing. So I think the way that, it's kind of like the budget. Yep. We usually refer the budget out to the full council. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now from now on, we'll just try to remember that. Whether it's necessary or not is, is That's right. irrelevant. Better safe than sorry. And so, you know, just, just, so we're done. Yeah. So, um, unless there's no other new business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, one, one, uh, Florence Fields had some blue stone delivered, and it was dumped on the south side of Meadow Street. Mm. And I had calls and wanted to know what this was about and what the filter fence was that was on the north side of Meadow Street. This is the Bean Allen Farm. Mm -hmm. So, I had called Wayne Biden and he had explained to me that they were doing 
the Greenway or the rail trail part on the Florence Field site. Mm -hmm. So I had assumed that the blue stone that was dumped on the north side of Meadow Street was to repair or to build the sidewalk on the athletic field site. So when the constituents called me, I had explained that that was stone dust for the bike way. Mm -hmm. So then I got a call today about this huge dust cloud. They were spreading this stone dust across the south side of Meadow Street, which is the community gardens. Mm -hmm. So after I told them it was stone dust for the north side, anyway, um, if we can could tighten up and somehow let the councilors know or just exactly what is going on there from day to day. <laughs> so I lied to them. I told them it was a stone dust. It's not. It turned out to be fertilizer, oh. which was ground up limestone huh. for the community gardens. Got it. Okay. And so then after I explained that to them, then they wanted to know where was the money coming from for that. So I called in Remogio at the rec department because they hold the lease on the south side of Meadow Street. And she told me she had no idea. She didn't know what it was, what was going on. So anyway, um, if we can tighten up the, uh, okay. the communication a little bit, right. um, somehow, I don't, and I, I, I'm not making any suggestions on how to do it, just somehow if I, I could get an email list so when they call me, because okay. it's from my ward. Of course. Yeah. Just how, yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. 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 So it's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. <laughs>